What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. First season and first offseason of the SFL is in the books. It was a wild offseason, man. If you guys missed the previous episode, I would recommend going and checking that out. We had some uh, subscriber movements in free agency, so the league has shifted a bit and some key players are in different spots i also got injuries turned off as well so we will not have to fret about uh, subscriber missing time due to injury we will have a full season stats you know depending on when you join but every game you play you will have stats accounted for that is right and uh, speaking of subscribers too we are up to 50 in the sfl that's right a 50 piece mcnugget combo even and I'm just loving the engagement, man. This SFL community is growing. We got official Discord, so I will post stats in there, records, uh, you know, a general chat for all your uh, crap talking needs that you need, crap talk around the SFL. And we also got four new subscribers joining the league today. So let's go ahead and check them out. We're going to get right into this episode. Got a lot to cover today. Cue the intro, man. All right, first up here, we got the Anchorage Snowhawks in the NFC North. Got two new subscriber players joining the Snowhawks. So first here, shout out cornerback Mason Smith. Shout out at Mason Tonic in the comments. Said you might want to be a wide receiver, but depending on what the room looks like, cornerback would be a good option too. And I mean, they got Jay Jettas and D-Hop. So I would say, you know, probably cornerback is the route to go. But getting a look at Mason here. He is a 6'2", 197-pound cornerback out of Michigan State. Man-to-man -man archetype. And checking out his stats here, 97 speed to go along with 96 acceleration. So he can definitely keep up with the fastest, speediest wide receiver out there. And with man coverage uh, being 80, zone coverage 77, pretty solid option as their cornerback number two. Could even be their cornerback number one before too long. And a new halfback on the Snowhawks slash in the SFL. We got Mr. Justin Shepard here. Shout out at Justin Shepard, 8239 in the comments. A true power back, uh, 5'9", 225 out of Michigan. Wanted to be Trine University. That unfortunately is not an option here in Madden. But I know my man Justin pretty well, and I know he would not mind being a Wolverine. That much is for sure. And said you wanted to be like a Derrick Henry type model. So I gave you number 22, of course. And with the 94 brake tackle to go along with the 90 trucking, I would definitely say this could be a potentially a Derrick Henry reincarnated. New QB in town here for the Montreal Monarchs in the AFC North. Joe Burrow, the coach said, Joe, you, you just can't stay healthy, man. You get injured too much. So you're going down on the depth chart and enter Mr. Leo McGlizzy. And Leo... We'll be throwing the ball to a fellow subscriber, Nick Stoyer, who he was one of the moves I talked about in free agency, was on the San Juan Tigers, and now he is on the Montreal Monarchs. And we play them next episode, too. So make sure, Leo, Nick, if you guys are watching, not going to want to miss next episode. That much is for sure. And Leo here, 6'1", 190 out of LSU, a scrambler archetype quarterback with the 91 throw power 94 throw on the run that is awesome and also 93 short accuracy to go along with 94 speed so when we're playing leo next week i imagine if he gets flushed out of the pocket he can make us pay through the air but also definitely make us pay on the ground as well san diego aviators have become one of the more popular teams in the sfl remember they were the number one seed in the AFC last season, and they got several subscribers on their team. They got QB Cameron Moore, uh, Aiden Leslie, actually, who was up to superstar development, and they brought in Nico Petey as well. They got a new cornerback, I do believe, in Dior Love as well, and a new subscriber entering the team today. That would be our first defensive end of the SFL. That would be Mr. Not Oreo. Shout out, it's Not Oreo in the comments and uh not oreo here at speed rusher 511 210 pounds he star development just like all the subscribers are he was a rookie with hidden dev when i moved him so that's why it still says hidden dev but if you didn't know 
every subscriber starts out as star development and getting a look at oreo stats here not oreo my apologies 90 finesse moves to go along with what's his speed is speed even on here 86 yeah right in front of me so 90 finesse moves 86 speed 79 tackle 86 strength a solid option as the starting right in for the san diego aviators we take on the vancouver huskies in week one of the sfl no subscribers on this team but it is a patrick mahomes led team and they, they had a pretty deep playoff push as well. So when you're playing the likes of Patrick Mahomes and Bijan Robinson, that is a deadly, deadly one-two punch. So this one should be pretty tough. They got Chris Godwin and Curtis Samuel as the starting wide receivers. Bo Melton, watch out for him on the Green Bay Packers next season. In real life, I'm telling you, he's going to be special. Jake Ferguson is the starting tight end. And getting a look at their offensive line, they got Trent Brown as the left tackle. Good, solid veteran. Peter, 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 I don't know. Peter Skaronski is the starting left guard. Nice up and coming offensive lineman. Garrett Bradbury, a pretty solid option. Will Hernandez, also a pretty solid option as well. And Tyree Phillips, uh, a little bit weak on the right side, I would say. Defensively, though, they got Montez Sweat on the defensive line. They got Christian Wilkins, so pretty good right and left side combination. And Chris Jones, so... Chris Jones gets to stay with Patrick Mahomes, apparently. Um, so this team looks to be pretty stacked. Jack Sanborn, the linebacker, nothing too crazy, but good up and comer. Leighton Vander Esch, of course, retired in real life, but he is always a baller in Madden. Pete Werner, I mean, he's an okay right linebacker, nothing too crazy. Cornerback, the Johnson bros, Jalen Johnson and Teron Johnson, pretty good. Uh, one Number one and number two corner there. Julius Brents, not bad in his own right. Jalen Petrie, really good free safety. Brandon Jones, eh, pretty good strong safety. I mean, they really, Cade York, uh, Browns fans, look away, please. And Ryan Winslow, the punter. They got a pretty stacked roster, and I imagine for week one, players are well-rested, they're fresh, they, you know, had a whole off-season of rest and recuperation time. So I imagine this one will be tough. We are home, so that's good, and we're on Thursday night primetime as well. So if you guys are fired up for season number two, here in the SFL, please like the video, subscribe if you're not subscribed. I'm almost to 1,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much, and I will do a nice NFL jersey giveaway once we get there. Also, join the Discord. Lots of SFL action going on. But without further ado, guys, let's get on down to Toronto Thunderbirds Stadium for week one of the SFL and get ready for the game. Always tough when you have to play Patrick Mahomes, but let alone in week one. What an initiation to the season. I could think of uh, 31 other teams uh, I'd probably want to play than a Patrick Mahomes-led team. You see that 99 overall there. So uh, Mahomes is going to be a problem today. And anytime you play Mahomes at Madden, him, uh, Lamar Jackson, and you know Dak Prescott and the Cowboys, they're like cheat codes, really. So we'll see if we can make life tough for Mahomes. It's an opening drive pick. It's a perfect timing. User pick at that with Marcus Peters. Oh my God, you could not have drawn it up any better. And that is Patrick Mahomes chucking an opening drive pick six. Wow. Um, there are there are a lot of different outcomes that I, I could have foreseen happening in this game. That was not on any of the lists. I can promise you that. And we put up seven in seven seconds and we go up seven to nothing. I mean, okay. Welcome to season number two of the freaking SFL. Cannot believe that. Cannot believe that. But that does not mean anything as Patrick Mahomes. He could turn on in a second. So this should be, I'm guessing, a Bijan run. Probably, probably a little rattled after that, I would imagine. And there is big number 91, Jay Mongstro. Shout out at Mongstro87 subscriber on this channel and on this team. Making a nice stop on Bijan Robinson for only a gain of one. Now, Mahomes coming out empty, so obvious passing situation. Uh, another pick would be amazing. We'll see if Mahomes does that. He doesn't throw a pick, but he has to throw out of the sack. This is a rough start for Patty Boy. Now, this Thunderbirds team is coming off of a Super Bowl win. We did win the Super Bowl in season number one, so they're probably playing with a lot of confidence. And, oh, Mahomes almost got sacked by Silas Vaden. He did decide to take off with it, and he was staring down the barrel of a Miles Garrett, <laughs> so he decided to slide. But he's, uh, Mahomes looking like a little paranoid back there. 
He's not making good decisions. I realize it's only the start of the game, but a pick six, a sack, uh, almost a sack, a near sack, a, a tackle for only a, a gain of one. I'm liking the way that this Thunderbirds team is starting out this season. And we are going to start our first offensive possession going to our big power back, Tubby McDouble. Tubby picking up a nice gain of four. He is now almost, I think he's an 87 rated overall player. Didn't get a dev upgrade or anything like that in the offseason, but he is just Mr. Consistency for sure. And Chris Olave back in the lineup. He's slightly getting pressed, so we're going to at least test it. Nope, we'll just go safe underneath completion to Darren Waller. Third and one coming up. How about a little double team on Chris Jones? That seems like something a smart man would do. Don't always consider myself a smart man, but in this situation, I'm smart enough as Tubby only needed one. Picked up about two or three. I mean, you couldn't really ask for a better start from these T-Birds. Shout out all the subscribers on the Toronto Thunderbirds for getting that uh, Samals trophy. Darren Waller, catch number two. Bang! It's there. Jordan Love starting out two for two, 37. He's still riding that Super Bowl high, I would imagine. And he's playing great. Let's bring in Kareem Hunt, though, our other running back. Can't forget about him. He was also a integral part of our success. Touchdown machine last season and we're going to test the left side here see if Kareem can get to the outside had to cut it back inside because there was no real blocks there and third and four coming up let's see if we can pick this one up all right T-Birds let's see if we can uh, burst this thing wide open put the pressure on Mahomes and the boys that is Marquez Valdez Scantling he's true he's true that is Marquez Valdez Pantling what why do I call him that you ask because he was pretty much our MVP la latter stages of, uh, of last year. So obviously, you know, MVP, not MBS. You guys get it. Okay. I don't need to explain my terrible jokes, but we're going to call him Marquez Valdez Pantling. And right now, I'm going to be trying to call somebody's name for six years. Slant route to Olave. He dropped it. It was a tough catch. That'll make a second and goal. Got to watch number 89 there. Newly acquired tight end St. James. Shout out at Neverland Productions in the comments. Looking to get my man involved in a hurry. I kind of force fed him the ball there. Wow. I thought that one could have been picked, but that was a heck of a grab by St. James. Not for a touchdown, but for a nice gain of three. And that does set us up in a pretty favorable situation, I would say, to maybe go stick route to Olave. Although, kind of want to... I want to bring uh, Mike Oxmall. Shout out at Rams fan in the comments. Bring him over. Looks like they are playing zone coverage, so I may not have Olave on this route like I want him, although I think I do. Olave dives in, catches it. Wow. That was not an easy catch, guys. We had to uh, lead that thing out to the right. Olave made a heck of a dive, heck of a grab, and we're up 14-0 on uh, Patrick Mahomes-led squad. I'm going to be pretty much playing like it's 0-0, though, because it is Patrick Mahomes. I mean, what in the world is Mahomes doing out there? He he must have been partying with uh, the Kelseys and the Swifts last, uh, last night. Got a little hung over there, maybe chugging beers with Jason Kelsey. I'm not sure. But he is, he is off of his game as uh, Leonard Floyd is there to wrap up the ball carrier, and that will make it third and nine. Maybe this uh, T-Birds team is just goaded. Maybe we're just goaded. And maybe that's just how it's going to be. I don't know. I mean, we, we did win a Super Bowl, so there is that. But we might just be a God-tier team. I know it's early, and of course, as I say that, I need to just shut my mouth. Because every time I say something like that, a big play happens. Jake Ferguson with a clutch, clutch third down conversion. Mahomes empty again, though. So to Bijan, just, <laughs> was this Arthur Smith-led team? Bijan Robinson not getting the ball at all? I mean, who's their coach? It, wouldn't that be something if it is Arthur Smith? I don't know, but Chris Godwin makes the catch. I would definitely, if it was me, I'd be looking to get Bijan Robinson involved because, I mean, first of all, he's Bijan Robinson. He's good. And second of all, the passing game is just not there. And there is Bijan on cue. It's a pass, though, not a run. Jordan Poyer wraps, it, wraps him up. Now Mahomes starting to settle in a little bit. Nickel mid blitz here should be the call. Ball is on the 42, so they are into our territory. I'm going to go ahead and use her up on Jordan Poyer as well. Bijan running routes. Bang! Miles Garrett, the monster, the animal, the savage, who was just uh, un relentless in the SFL playoffs, getting sack after sack after sack, piling those sacks up, 
it was it was something it was something to see and looks like he's gonna continue where he left off at getting a big sack on Mahomes so now Mahomes sacked and has a pick six uh, when when can you say that <laughs> not too often there's Bijan Robinson nice cut that's what I'm talking about see Bijan Robinson is a weapon Gets most of that yardage back. That will make it third and 10. All right, guys, let's just play a lockdown man coverage here. Not even going to audible to zone or anything like that. And the pass is hauled in there. Wow. Somehow, Chris Godwin, I thought that one might have been in, an incomplete pass. Somehow, Rad God is able to hold on. And this is what I was talking about. See, now the Huskies are starting to come alive, and they are threatening with about 40 seconds to go in the first. Let's uh, just kind of lock in here. Settle in, guys. It's going to be Curtis, or I'm sorry, Wandell Robinson, number 17, getting it to the 10-yard line with 30 seconds to go in the first. Mahomes coming out single back now, 10 yards to go, 10 seconds to go as well. See if he gives it to Robinson. It's going to be a play fake, actually, and there is the points. Right back, that is Farrow Brown, the backup tight end. And boy, oh boy, did they need that. If they didn't score there, I mean, this could have been the SFL playoffs all over again. I mean, we were just... I mean, we there was a couple close games, but I would say a lot of those games, we it's kind of a route in our favor, right? There's your first quarter, 14 to 7. Huskies actually outpassing us now, if you can believe that. But I mean, in our defense, we had a whole possession that was, you know, it's a pick six, so our offense never even stepped on the field. So yeah, I mean, I would assume they would have more yards than us, but they don't got more points than us. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. I'm streaking my man St. James. Would love to get him involved and get some stats on the board for him. This actually could be it. And no, it's not. That's just going to be a pick by Jalen Petrie. And I, I, I may may or may not, right, not making excuses. I may or may not kind of had tunnel vision on St. James. Really want to get my man involved. Uh, he was open for a second. It wasn't, you know, the most terrible of reads, but kind of clogged and congested. Definitely shouldn't have thrown that. And just like that, the Huskies are right back into this game. Score here will tie it up. And hanging on to the ball there is Wondell Robinson for his second catch and also a gain of five. Yeah, man, I'm kicking myself all over that. That's for sure. Uh, Jordan Love did have a lot of picks last season, I will say. So something, and most of them were probably my fault. Although right there, Jake Ferguson wide open, breaking a tackle. I mean, come on, man. God almighty, you would think that's Patrick Mahomes throwing to Travis Kelsey out there. I mean, don't get me wrong. Jake Ferguson, two-year man out of Wisconsin. He is, I mean, I mean, come on. A no-look turnaround pass by Mahomes. Is that what we're in for today, really, Madden? You guys feel that draft coming in? Yeah, that's me uh, cracking the window of opportunity for these uh, Vancouver Huskies and letting the breeze blow right in. Ooh, Denzel Perryman almost got to him, but yeah. All right, so... um. All that stuff I was saying at the beginning about how good we looked and how bad the Huskies looked. Yeah, just go ahead and disregard that. Um, pretend I never said it. Wipe it from your memory. So we got a brand new ball game, and I'm going to need to uh, not throw picks and not be dumb on this next try. I'm going to just kind of run it right at right towards Chris Jones, make him earn all that money he's making. Oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Chris, for the disrespect. I put some respect on your name there. As Chris Jones brings us down for a loss of one. Second and 11. Got to figure our life out here because this looks like a, a very different team. There's Zay Jones. Please hang on to that. Ooh, vicious hit there by multiple Huskies. Leighton Van Esch was the one that I saw in there, but way for Zay Jones to hang on. He had a uh, wide receiver, a little wide receiver mentor uh, scenario with our subscriber Mike Oxmall in the preseason. So interesting to see if that is still developing and if so, how that will develop. Let's uh, go inside zone here to Kareem Hunt out of the shotgun. And I mean, <laughs> my uh, my guard there, Graham Glasgow, just couldn't get out of the way. I'm going to try to probably roll out and hit Darren Waller here. I think that's the best move if he can get open. He is. Oh, thank you so much, man. Oh, man, that was huge, dude. That was huge. Love 8 for 10 for 107. I had to go to that play. TE attack. I felt really, really good about it. And it was a smart thing that I did because, boy, putting the ball... Back to the Huskies there. You just get the feeling. That could have been the proverbial nail in the coffin. I know it's not even halftime, but that's just kind of how this game works. There's some good running from Tubby. Kind of uh, wish my tight end Waller there would have got out of the way. 
but I will certainly take it when we get almost down to the red zone. Okay, ball is on the 21. Let's just run behind our fullback, Kyle Juvchek. He's a pretty good blocker, hoping that he can lead the way, and boom, good enough. All right, Tubby falling forward as well. He's now up to six for 34, and if we can get Tubby running downhill with a full head of steam, uh, I mean, that's where he earns his bread and butter, man. He rarely gets tackled without pushing the ball forward. Like, he will always gain an extra yard or two just from simply falling forward. As you see there, prime example, you know, getting it to the four, second and goal. Let's try to punch this thing in. This could be Stick City again to Olave. Maybe those linebackers drop back. Maybe might have Darren Waller. Nope, it's going to be Olave. Okay, second touchdown of the game. Go ahead and spike that puppy. Man, oh man, did we need that. And we also get the ball after halftime as well. Now, there's still four minutes to go. Uh, four and a half, to be exact. 433, if you want me to be 100% exact. And the way that Mahomes and the boys are playing, you know, you just get the feeling that uh, this one might be a good old shootout. You never know. He does have a pick six already, but I have to see if we can maybe force him off the field. Maybe get the ball back and have a potential double dip scenario before halftime ball is on the 35 here gonna use her up on matt milano Bijan, we'll see if he gets the ball he is and yeah that was on me man i cut the wrong way maybe maybe i'm not gonna use her up on the guys who have a man man assignment on Bijan robinson because i mean yeah look he's talking all the trash he's a really good player very shifty very fast uh very curious to see what he does now as the falcons are under new tutelage no more arthur smith to potentially hold him back we'll see if he finally has that breakout season that everybody's hoping for that was a good stop there by matt milano and that will make it second and eight from the 40 got a spy on the field here denzel perryman also husky's got a fullback in so we're gonna use her up on yaya diaby come on somebody get to be john robinson it was in fact denzel perryman i like having that spy on the middle of the field not even to watch for the quarterback run but just to have somebody kind of sit down there and, and patrol that center of the field. I feel like that's where I get tore up in uh, more often times than not. A oh, wide open there is Curtis Samuel. Shout out to St. Louis Sentinels franchise. He was a big piece in that series. And that will take us very close to two-minute warning. And Huskies are controlling this clock very well. See if Mahomes snaps it. He does not have to. But I imagine that he probably will, which he will. It's going to be Bijan Robinson getting stopped there by Milano and Perryman. That will take us to the two-minute warning. Playbook is wide open for him, too. I mean, they got all three timeouts. They could run. They could pass. Does not matter. Mahomes, it is going to be a pass there. And that is Wondell Robinson. He's the man today. He's the man getting it all the way down to the one. And I almost want them to just, I mean, they're going to score, like, unless something crazy happens. So I almost want them to just go ahead and punch it in now to give us, you know, as much possible time as we have Bijan Robinson. Yeah, going to score. 21-21, we got ourselves a barn burner here, ladies and gentlemen. See if we can just punch it in one more time for halftime. And I don't know, Mahomes is seizing out there. <laughs> Start out with something safe here, screen pass, and just see if we can get a, a decent amount of yards. Ooh, almost sacked there. Oh, nice block thrown. Yep, that will do it. I'm gonna go ahead and run out of bounds with Tubby. That's exactly, and also one of the Huskies coaches Looked uh, exactly same face scan as Tubby. So maybe maybe they're relatives. I don't know. Uh? And now we're going to kind of get a little aggressive with uh, some shot plays here. Also, the double team Chris Jones. He's been kind of a problem today. But maybe Olave or somebody can possibly get open. Which, oh yeah, baby, Olave is open. Come on, love. Get it to him. Thank you. Oh, that's got to be a horse collar. It's got to be a horse collar or a face mask. Oh, yeah. You guys see that? You guys smell that? You guys smell that? I smell a double dip scenario happening. Gotta, gotta watch this clock, too, man. I don't want to score. Yeah, I don't want to score with this much time. I need, like, a running play. Uh, don't have any, I don't have any favorites really queued up. But I, if we score here, awesome. You know, not saying I won't take that, but I want that clock to tick down a little bit more. And Kareem Hunt will ensure that that does, in fact, happen. Come out shotgun here and got some meshes working in the middle of the field. So I should have went Waller. I went Zay Jones instead. I kind of wish he would have held on to that and, and got tackled. 
because uh, the clock would have continued to run. Third and goal, and I really don't want to settle for a field goal if possible. So hopefully Darren Waller, yeah, 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 okay. So now we're only going to score three, and the Huskies are going to have about a minute to work with and all three timeouts, and Patrick Mahomes and the boys are heating up for sure. So not the best management by me there at the end. Had the right idea, but didn't execute very well. See if we can keep the Huskies out of the end zone in this final 50 seconds. And I would imagine, I mean, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be passing, you know, situations throughout here. No sense in handing the ball to Bijan Robinson. And, ah, man, where's that Mahomes that we saw early on? I mean, in, in fairness, that was a little quick underneath route to Farrell Brown. That's not really what you want either. And that kind of sets us up pretty nice if, uh, oh, Mahomes, come on. Somebody crash on him. Going to call another timeout, but did achieve the first down. Bringing in our big dime package here. I just want as many DBs on the field as possible. Just don't get beat deep. If they kick a field goal, they kick a field goal. I'm not really worried about that. And looks like that is going to be what happens. I mean, they have a timeout. Yeah, this is, well, looks like they're going to just go ahead and settle for the field goal. So, or what? Maybe an end zone shot. Maybe uh, the coach, I think it's Nick Sirianni was the coach. It looked like him anyways. Why leave 16 seconds on the clock though? I mean, stranger things have happened. I probably won't be aggressive just because I'm not trying to, you know, try to keep Jordan Love's picks down. But I'm not saying I'm not gonna at least try screen or something like that. 24-24, two uh, powerhouses. Two powerhouses going at it. And we are, looks like we're set for a, for a fun one here and get a look at the games around the league. Check and see if your team, if you're a subscriber team, playing which i mean they will be all all 32 teams are playing but check and see if you're playing another subscriber right that could be fun and i will also have uh you know records the records and some stats and stuff like that in the discord so make sure you again check that out if you haven't i think that we're gonna need our routes to be good because again this one is looking like it'll probably be a shootout and we're gonna go ahead and defend the medium pass as well against Patrick. Let's start out half number two with some Tubby McDouble action here. Got a feeling we're going to need to lean on the deep shot and be a little aggressive, but you never know. Maybe Tubby can have a great, great second half here. We're going to go ahead and shift the line and just run in behind you. Check lanes open up. There's Tubby. Okay. Tried to uh, break the tackle there from Brandon Wood. The safety wasn't able to, but I will certainly take that type of result. And you know what? Let's stay on the ground here. This time, though, going to bring in Kareem Hunt. And I'm going to run to the left side here. Going to motion out St. James as well. And just go ahead and ID up this linebacker here as the mic need some good blocking. And Kareem could have something here. Ah, uh, could not shake the tackle of Leighton Vander Esch, who is like the best thing to happen in Madden since sliced bread. Got to go back to these little RPOs. Those worked so well for us last season and got to make sure that we get Mike Oxmall in on some of these. There's MVP, Marquez Valdez Pantling. I'm liking the way that this first drive is going for sure. All right, come on, T-Birds. Now Mike Oxmall is out on the field. Let's go ahead and streak Waller. Just going to kind of use him as a, a, a distraction, actually. Zay Jones should be open. He's open enough. Run after the catch. He is there to make a nice play. Teron Johnson couldn't keep up with him. Just like that, we got the ball all the way down to the 28. So we are playing great. Uh, Vancouver Huskies, I hate. Let's see what play is on the slate. Nice round. This could be a little drag route to St. James. As a matter of fact, let's put Olave on the curl just in case that read is not there. But it is St. James. About his second or third catch, I want to say. Which is uh, probably... Half of what he had all last season on the San Juan Tigers. Tubby up the gut here on second and five. More double teams on Chris Jones. Actually, you know what? Oh, I don't have enough time to do it. Olave was getting pressed. I kind of like that. But Tubby, he is running very, very good in the second half. Averaging six yards per carry, might I add. And the blocking is also holding up pretty well as well. And I see no reason to go away from that. We are taking a lot of time off of this clock Keeping Patrick Mahomes and the boys on the bench, which is uh, what you always like to see. And, oh, man, just needed Mike Oxmall to hold a block. And that one's probably coming back with a hold, I would presume. Holding. Who's getting fired today? Show me. Who's the lucky winner? Ah, Joe Tooney. Now, I think your job's safe. Fuck yeah. 
We're going to go back to this little tight end drag, but I'm telling you, Chris Olave getting pressed. If that safety comes down, which he did, come on, Chris, come on, can Jordan get it up there? Oh, Chris Olave, hat trick. That is his third touchdown on the afternoon. That was a well-placed ball from Jordan Love. I mean, put it in a spot where only Chris Olave could get it. And I saw that little bit of press there. Teron Johnson could not keep up with uh, Chris Olave. And man, oh man, what a way to exert our dominance. Coming out of the locker room, see if Mahomes and the boys match that. I wouldn't be surprised if they do. But going up 31-24, putting the pressure on Nick Sirianni and them, I like it. That's actually not Nick Sirianni. That is maybe Dennis Allen, I want to say. I, couldn't I can't tell who that coach was. I thought it was Sirianni at first, but it, it wasn't. Um, regardless, though, doesn't matter. Let's see what Mahomes has in store for us here. That might actually be Jonathan Gannon because the Huskies are in the NFC West. Obviously, the Cardinals are as well. I cannot remember who all the teams used to be. I do remember Mahomes carving us up in the first half. It looks like he's going to continue to do that. As Chris Godwin makes a nice reception of nine. And I'm going to try my hand at these little press blitz scenarios here. Uh, going to definitely use her up on Winfield and watch Bijan Robinson. Hoping he stays into block, which he, I mean, we might be getting cooked. Oh, thank God. It's an overthrow from Mahomes. He was looking at Curtis Samuel, number four, DJ Reed, guarding number four, Curtis Samuel. That one had disasters written all over it there for a minute. All right, come on. Come on, T-Birds. They got a fullback in the game here, so fully expecting this to be a Bijan run. Silas Vaden was there to make a big hit stick, but... Bijan Robinson got just a, literally exactly what he needed on that one. So nice play by the Huskies. And Mahomes coming out single back. Wouldn't be surprised if this is Bijan Robinson again. Going to kind of uh, pretend that it is. No, it's not. Well, it is. But out of the backfield. And look at Yaya Diaby there to drill Bijan for a loss of four. Yaya Diaby was a great, great player for us last season. Looking like he may be that again in season number two. Ball's on the 33. Going to play good zone coverage here, hopefully. He's got uh, Mahomes, got the fullback, and Bijan Robinson there in the backfield. And, oh, come on, Matt Milano, put your hands up. He had a chance at a pick or at least a swat, something like that. Mahomes shifting the play. Probably going to be Bijan on the left. We'll kind of guard him up. Yeah, that Texas route, man. Bijan is from Texas. Texas route killed us. Bijan Robinson answers, and the back-and-forth affair continues here in Thunderbirds Field. I'll tell you, if you like offense, you're in the right place. And if you like Chris Olave, you're also in the right place because he has the hat trick today. I want to go back to Tubby, though. He was a really a key factor on that last drive. And believe he's averaging like six yards per carry. So definitely want to try to keep that going for sure. And the blocking is good. I should have cut it kind of away from Joe Tooney. It's a little tough with Tubby, though, because he's not the best when it comes to, you know, the jukes and things like that. He's definitely our, our power back guy for sure. Kind of like RPO, though. Um, that's been our bread and butter, like I said earlier. Kind of wish we had Mr. Mike Oxmall in for this one, but Marquez Valdez Pantling will do. Nice. Oh, look at the block from Chris Olave. Chris Olave doing everything in this game. Love to see it in week number one. Coach says screen to McDouble. And, hey, I'm actually kind of a fan of that. I'm sure the pass rush is going to be trying to turn the Jets up, so hopefully we can make them pay. Need some good blocking on the outside. Oh, Joe Tooney just leveled somebody. Get this man an honorary ownership stake in IHOP because he just put the pancake on full display there. Don't go anywhere, and if you do, take your phone or your device with you because, I mean, we're virtually even in terms of yardage. We're even on the scoreboard. This is a fun, fun opening game here of the SFL. And in this situation, I kind of like PA rollout. I mean, I feel like third and three with the way that our running game is going, you know, they could definitely uh, definitely see a run. So maybe a play action rollout, possibly hit Olave, St. James, maybe even scramble out with Jordan Love. St. James is open. Come on, get that first down, brother. That's what I'm talking. Wait, what? Oh, no, sir. Uh-uh. I said, uh-uh. We're challenging this. that. No, terrible spot. Not even going to look at the replay. That was the first down. And if that's not a first down, guess what? We're going for it. I mean, forward progress should easily... There's no way. 
I mean, unless I just completely... Yeah, I mean, forward progress should have the first down. I mean, I was clearly... Clearly past the line to gain. I don't see how I couldn't have been. Not even overturned. What? Oh, man, dude. That's terrible. That's terrible. That's terrible. We gotta, we gotta pick this up. No. We gotta pick this up here. Let's see what uh, type of coverage they're coming out in. Oh, man, dude. Uh, this could be... This could come back to bite me, I feel like. I, why can't I even... can't even audible. Oh, man. It's not letting me audible my play. I mean, it, it is, but I can't see it. All right, come on, Tubby. This is all you, brother. I need you to pick up one yard. I believe that you can do it. Let's get it done. Please. Tubby, you're the man. That was the weirdest sequence of events that I've seen in quite some time. Very, very stressful, too. Raising my blood pressure. Okay, now I can see it. That was very strange. Very strange indeed. Um, Olave, put you on a curl. Maybe one of our tight ends can get open uh, or open enough. We're going to give St. James a shot, but it's off target by love. He was getting open, too. And, I mean, now we got to kick a field goal. I'm not going to leave points on the board. I mean, that would just be dumb. The fourth and one situation was uh, a bit different. I, hopefully I didn't miss that. Okay, yeah, we got Justin Tucker. We're good. Wow, so all that to only go up by three. We took a lot of time off the clock, too, but now... You know, if the Huskies go down here and score on a nice methodical drive, that will really put the pressure on us. So they're moving. Ball is on the 39-yard line. And, ooh, Matt Milano is right there. And, man, these Huskies are breaking tackles now. They're playing good. You always hate Mahomes in these comeback situations. I just saw the Debo package was one of their one of their play calls, so they must have been the 49ers, and that must be Kyle Shanahan. I've been trying to guess this freaking coach all game long. I don't know why. I'm stuck on it, but I thought it was Nick Sirianni, and then I thought it was uh, whoever the heck else I thought it was, uh, Jonathan Gannon, and uh, no, turns out it is definitely Kyle Shanahan, because apparently this team used to be the 49ers, so there you go, oh, come on, give me a, uh, put my hand in the cookie jar there, got a little greedy, and unfortunately, Curtis Samuel makes us pay. We're going to go press blitz here, and just hoping... Matt Milano or somebody can get in the backfield. That would be awesome. It's going to be Robinson. Oh, I had Milano, but I missed it. Luckily, Yaya Diaby was there to uh, prevent Bijan Robinson from making us pay. Gain of one. I will certainly take that, and that will bring up a nice, nice second and nine. Huskies are behind the sticks now, although that means uh, nothing in Madden land, but that should be a false start, which is going to move them on back. Oh, yeah. Give me a little dance, ref. Love to see it. Thank you very much, whoever that was. I could see this being a run. Uh, single back, definitely a running set for sure. Yaya Diaby, can you get to Robinson? You certainly can, and also Jay Monstro. Jay Monstro's got a, a healthy dose of tackles today. He'll probably get credit for, you know, a half a tackle on that one, but he's been all over the field, and I'm liking what I am seeing from our subscriber D tackle there to go along with uh, also Silas Vaden. It's a big third down here, guys. God, oh, it's a screen. It's a screen. Oh, come on. You got to be kidding me. Of all the calls to call. Mahomes over 300 yards now, and boy, we really needed that stop, and we could not get it. Although, I guess if the Huskies score, which looking like they're gonna, they'll probably leave a good amount of time on the clock. Oh, come on. That's a pick. Marcus Peters has gotten so close. Of course, he had that pick six earlier, but there's been a couple times where... I thought he might get another one, uh, but just a little bit too short. He's getting a little bit old, you know, so maybe lost a step or two. Um, still a great player, though. Obviously, uh, there is the lead from the Huskies. Chris Godwin going to make it 38 to 34, pending the extra point from Cade York. Oh, come on, Cade. Do us like you did in Cleveland. Miss some extra points. We know you're good for that. Not going to miss that one. But we got about three and a half to go down here and score. Got to have a touchdown now, too. So this drive here, essentially the ball game. Okay, we're going to start things off here with the RPO. I do see Chris Olave getting pressed, but no need to go for the home run shot, you know, quite quite yet. And it's not going to be a hold. It is, isn't it? It is. Unless it's roughing the passer. That would be awesome. Eligible receiver. Come on, T-Birds. Freaking Ryan Kelly. Get out of here, man.
All right, now we got Mike Oxmo on RPO. I realize this is not, no. You know what? Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I see the press. We got to be aggressive. I'm going to put Mike Oxmo on a drag and just show me that safety. Oh, of course he wouldn't. Oh, uh, nope. That's bad. That's bad throw. Mm. Yeah, Bills Verts is the call. And just show me MVS or maybe Waller or Jones. Somebody on that right. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. You got to believe me. You got to believe me. I was not trying to go to Darren Waller. I was trying to go to... Uh, MVS, MVP, Marquez Dados Pantling. I was trying to go to him in the middle of the field, and I just completely pressed the wrong button. And why is Justin Tucker putting the ball? That's supposed to be Jack Mavros, man. Oh, uh, I got to go reorder this depth chart because Madden is stupid. And that may that may have been the ball game. I mean, they're already almost in field goal range. Let's we get a quick three and out. Maybe dropping our first game here in season number two. Who wants to show up? Who wants to suit up and show up? Is it going to be Jordan Poyer? I mean, they want us to blitz him. We're going to blitz him. Come on. Someone get to Mahomes. Nope. That essentially will probably do it. I mean, we can hold him to a field goal. And that would still make it a one-score game. But clock is not on our side. Mahomes is probably going to hit 400 or something. Um, so it's just not looking good for us. And, that, hey, I mean, you know what? When you play a good team like that, oh, my God. Pat Pete, that was your chance. We are getting so close on these picks, just falling a little bit short. It's an obvious running situation, so I'm going to even have Jordan Poyer just leave his man. And, all right, I mean, good running from Bijan Robinson. We're going to call a timeout. But when do we use... Oh, that challenge. We lost a challenge. That's right. I don't think it would have necessarily mattered because, I mean, like, we can't stop him anyways. It would be nice to have it. It would definitely be nice to have it. And is Mahomes going to continue? Yeah, uh, B. John Robinson, let him score, actually. It doesn't matter. We're dropping this game. Yeah, it's pretty much out of our reach. I mean, if we stop him here, though, and hold him to a field goal, I mean, it could. could we, we could still... Get a chance to tie it up. Oh, give me a pick. Not a pick, but I'll tell you what. Uh, game is not over yet. They're going to kick a field goal. Unless they fake it. I would be highly, highly upset. We got a chance to... Yeah, they're going to make it 41 to 34. So, game is actually not over. And maybe we even get aggressive and go for two. I don't know. I'm not saying... I, we we got to worry about scoring first. But the game is not over. Somehow, we still have life. No timeouts, though, so got to be very, very cautious with every single play. How about Darren Waller on a little play action seam here? He usually gets open on this route, so it's long. Oh, we don't have protection, though. I just threw it into the ass of Trent Williams. I mean, yeah, Chris Jones had instant pressure. And, I mean, unfortunately, like, you know, we got we to gotta go for deep shots here. There's no, no, con no playing conservative. Uh, Chris Olave, they're not even going to be trying to press him. Or anything like that. And maybe we just... I'm going to give him a shot. Come on, Chris. Come on. You got a chance, brother. Oh, he caught it. Run up to the line. Spike it. Spike it. Spike it. Come on, T-Birds. Wow. I got to go re-up on my blood pressure medication, man. This game. Wow. This game. And what do we do here? Corner shot. PA counter go. We got to double team Chris Jones, though. He's been a freaking problem and a half. And maybe, like, Zay Jones or someone gets open. Maybe Waller. I don't know. I know we need protection. Zay Jones. Can we fit it in there? Oh, he had it and dropped it. Oh, that was it right there. I'm looking at Olave, back corner of the end zone, and that is probably my only read. Come on. Uh, no. He got bumped on his route. He, he may have gotten open. Oh, no. I didn't mean to do that. Wow. Okay, well. <laughs> see, I'm messing up in this game, man. I didn't really want to call this play. Um, but I guess we're going PA counter go. And hopefully hitting Zay Jones. No, we're going to get almost sacked. Wow. A valiant, valiant effort. And unfortunately, we're going to drop. 41-34. But that was a fun game. Fun game in season number one of the SFL. 
and still a lot, a lot of football to go. Kyle Shanahan, yeah, finally get your name right here at the end. Coach Damon Sanders, he can't believe it. I mean, it's Patrick Mahomes. Like, it's the Huskies. They got a great roster. And, I mean, really, aside from a couple boneheaded plays for me, we had a chance. I mean, we went step for step with them. They went step for step with us at times, too. And we had a chance to actually tie it up or maybe potentially take the lead there at the end. And uh, it was a good old-fashioned duel here. Mahomes had 355. Jordan Love had 307. Mahomes had four touchdowns. Love had three. Both quarterbacks had one pick. And they both played really, really great. Tubby did not quite reach 100 yards, but nice average yards per carry at 5.6. Also with the three broken tackles. And Bijan played more or less identical. Receiving Chris Olave, 121, five catches and three touchdowns. Godwin played good. Wondell Robinson played really good. Darren Waller played pretty good as well. Uh, take a look at Tubby, actually three for 36, okay. And I swear uh, St. James, three for 10. And no catches by Mike Oxmall, unfortunately. That uh, sucks, for lack of a better word. Leighton Vander Esch was all over the field. And where are our subscriber defenders here? We'll take a look at them. Jay Mongstro, only two tackles, really. I thought he would have had more. And also, where the heck is Jax Vaden? There's Silas Vaden with a tackle. Where's Jax? Did Jax Vaden... I mean, he's on the depth chart. Don't know why. Maybe, I guess... He just didn't get, uh, yeah, and Marcus Peters was out there. Huh, interesting. I got to look at a few things. Uh, make sure that our depth chart is ordered correctly because Madden likes to screw with that sometimes. But anyways, let's go check out the subscriber stats here in week one of the SFL. Yeah, and look at that, man. Why does Madden do me like this? Why is Jax Vaden so far down on the depth chart? He was our cornerback number two and really could even be our cornerback number one. So I am so sorry about that, Jax. I don't know what the heck Madden was doing here. Also got to make sure he should be our slot corner as well. Yeah, they had my man. They did my man dirty. I don't know what was going on with that. Very, very unfortunate. But we got it all squared away for uh, season number or <laughs> week number two. And we'll check out the schedule here around the league. I got to learn where some of these new subscribers are at. So if I forget you, if I mess up, please call me out in the comments. I definitely need it. Portland Steamers get the win over our division rival, Brooklyn Nighthawks. So at least another team will also be 0-1 to start in the AFC East. Derek Daragosa, our subscriber QB, 251 yards and a touchdown. So he played pretty good, but unfortunately it just wasn't enough. And oh my God, Derek Henry is on the Steamers. There you go. And uh, who did Derek get the ball going to? Braxton Berrios was our third number one wide receiver. I mean, with Jamar Chase and Michael Thomas on the team, maybe that's why they lost. St. Louis Bulls crushed the Louisville Desperados 31 to seven. And we got a subscriber running back here on the Bulls. That would be Mr. Austin Kringle, 23 carries for 110 yards and a touchdown. Welcome to the SFL, brother. You got Kirk Cousins as your quarterback, and he also helped you out as well by throwing two touchdowns. But great game from the subscriber running back out of Buffalo. Redwoods drop a close one to the Columbus Caps. We got a couple subscribers now on Rio de Janeiro, and wow, Gardner Minshew played really good. But Lionel Moore, 177 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. So the touchdowns were there. The you know touchdown interception ratio was there. But definitely could have used, used some more yardage. JSN was his big target and also Tyree Kill. Yeah, got to get got to get that ball down there to Mr. Hill. And then we also have a subscriber free safety here, Flash Parker, who played pretty well. Six tackles, but no big game changing plays like picks, sacks or forced fumbles. Albuquerque Armadillos get a close victory over the Orlando Orbits. Got some subscribers all around on these teams. So first going to highlight our halfback here, Johnny Waters, who really is outshining Jonathan Taylor now, which is not easy to do nor say, but he was 16 for 77, 4.8 yards per carry, no touchdowns, but apparently they didn't need him. Got a couple subscribers, receivers here on the Armadillos. We have Jaden Taylor went five for 50 and Bjorn Jeffrey three for 26, but no touchdowns though. So that could have been, uh, you know, what, what happened there for the orbits and cannot forget about our defender, Arturo Esquivel. Where are you at, brother? Where are you hiding? There you are. You're down here. And don't tell me this crap is happening again. Unless he just didn't have any plays, which I highly doubt. He should be their starting linebacker. 
And now I got to go see if, and there's no injuries. We know that to be true. So I got to make sure that Madden didn't screw up their depth chart as well. Hey, can't Condors get a big win against the former number one seed last season in the San Diego Aviators? Got some subscribers all around here. Let's check out the Aviators first. So Cameron Moore, 322 touchdowns, but it wasn't enough. Also got my Discord pulled up here as well so I can uh, see the stats. They got two subscriber halfbacks. So Aiden Leslie, 19 for 53 and a touchdown. And then also Nico Petey, three for nine as well. And then taking a look at the defensive side of the ball, we got two subscribers here now. We got Dior Love had five tackles, no picks nor interceptions and or picks and interceptions same thing no picks nor forced fumbles and then we had not oreo here with four tackles and also a big big sack so that was nice to see from the newly added subscriber okay and canton condors got receiver braden keys but also he has no stats either so i'm really hoping there's not any uh good old tom foolery going on here in these rosters man i don't feel like going through and having to fix all the depth chart issues but i will if I have to, and we got two subscriber safeties though here. So Eli Sakowitz first up five tackles and a TFL and also two nice pass deflections. So that's good to see from Sox. And then Mike Collins had three tackles and also a pass deflection of his own. Melbourne Dreadnoughts dropped 35 on the Sacramento Sentinels. And we got a couple subscriber receivers now on the Dreadnoughts. How about Rocky DiBernardo though? Subscriber quarterback, 348, four touchdowns. But man, oh man, those three interceptions must have done him in. And getting a look at the Dreadnoughts receivers here, we have Alexander Klublek, five receptions for 78. And also Mr. Yeezy Fuentes, two receptions for 14 yards. And the Dreadnoughts, they're in our division, so they may be a tough, tough opponent this year. San Juan Tigers got a big victory over the Tokyo Golden Eagles. They used to have like three or four subscribers, and now they are only down to one. And that would be a defender here, uh, Mr. Love. So let's go ahead and check out King Love. Yeah, okay, four tackles and a nice pass deflection as well. Honolulu Dragons dropped 41 on the Omaha Pioneers. Wow. And that was due to the efforts of uh, Mr. Brock Purdy here. But we got some subscribers on the Dragons now. So that is always good to see. James Briner, though, no stats. Um, okay, again, he should be there starting starting tight end so i don't know what's going on there gotta check some things out here it's only week one guys i'll get things ironed out if you're watching and you're concerned about stats do not worry but uh zachary nolan who joined uh on the oilers la late last season and then hit free agency and signed with the dragons he had four tackles and a big tfl and a dominating dominating win for honolulu austin lumberjacks who are also in our division got a big win over the oakland wizards we got subscribers on both of these teams here as well so we'll go ahead and check out michael yakin who really played great last season he had 353 two touchdowns and the two picks though gotta gotta watch that gotta be careful with that and they also added darian woolcott from the chicago elks he had five for 15 playing behind david montgomery though but at least we see him on the field getting some stats which i can't say for some of these coaches and some of these depth charts and the wizards and dak prescott they got three subscribers here so i am al musa wow he cooled off a bit, man. He was killing it last season. He went 16 for 36 in this one here and only averaged 2.3 yards per carry. So that is not great, but still a lot of time to go. Newly added cornerback to the Wizards, C. Ben, had five tackles and a nice TFL as well. And then Michael Briner, who led this team in TFLs last season, three tackles and also a half a sack to add to his stat sheet. Salt Lake City only put up seven against the Virginia Beach Blues, so that is not... Great to see from them. And, uh, oh, my controller's low. Uh-oh, good thing we're almost done. Mason Buchanan, 216 and a touchdown, but those two picks, that's what got him at the end of the day. Looks like uh, he did get Garrett Wilson and Marvin Mims involved pretty well. But the Bisons, hey, we played them for the AFC Championship and the right to move on to a Super Bowl. So not going to count them out this early in the season. Voyagers and Oilers and Nation. Voyagers did get the W, 31-21. We got subscribers again on both teams so uh starting things out with uh well start things out with the voyagers i already saw lucas thomas there but uh they have two subscriber uh running backs and joe mixon so why did they pick these guys up i have no idea maybe i'll go in there and just do a little funny business and bump joe mixon down 
I'll probably end up doing that. But Mac Hayward, four for 20. And Austin Gutierrez, one for four. But I'm going to have a little sit down talking to with Joe Mixon. Don't you worry, Voyagers. And Oilers Nation, they were a tough opponent last year as well. Four subscribers on this team now. So we got Lucas Thomas, 179 and one touchdown. So that, you know, not the uh, not the best game. Floyd Butler went three for 23. And also Kyrie Brooks, two for 19. So Lucas, eh, not his best showing, but that's okay. Still a lot of time left to go. And then newly added safety Thomas Francisco here had four tackles and two pass deflections in his first game in the SFL. Shamrocks and the Monarchs. It was a close one, 21-24. And again, subscribers on both teams as well. So we will go ahead and start out with the Shamrocks here. So Jesse Buzo Jr., 243 and no touchdowns and two picks. That's a tough game for Jesse, but I'm confident that he will rebound and then subscriber uku tree rat only one for 13 it's unfortunate it looks like he was targeting uh debo samuel and hawk mostly in this one and then tyrell smoochie wallace only two tackles and no uh you know game wrecking nor game breaking plays and then getting a look at the monarchs here leo mcglizzy in his first sfl action 249 two touchdowns and a pick so you know not the not the best game not the worst game and then also nick stoyer subscriber wide receiver formerly on the san juan tigers he went one for 14. Paris Black Knights get a nice win over the Anchorage Snowhawks, 31 to 13. We got a brother subscriber duo here on the Black Knights. And Jaden Hayes is the QB, 241. No touchdowns and no picks. No problem, I guess, right? I mean, hey, I guess they didn't need him. And also getting a look at his brother here, Caleb Hayes, one for 20. No touchdowns, okay. So not the best, uh, be best game, but looks like it was small sample size and you know, limited action on the Snowhawks here. Justin Shepard, newly added subscriber today, 14 for 41 and also a big touchdown though. So that was good to see. And uh, Mason Smith, the corner, he had eight tackles. Wow. All over the field and also a big TFL. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough to best the Paris Black Knights. And of course, Huskies and Thunderbirds. We know uh, <laughs> everything that happened in that game. So no need to relive that pain and misery. But that is week one in the books here of the SFL. Looking like we are going to be primed and ready for a good season. And we take on the Montreal Monarchs and two subscribers next episode. So make sure you, and then, and then the Aviators and then the Snowhawks. So next three weeks, subscriber players taking on subscriber players all across the board. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.